Uh, first thing is, uh, lastly, for review parts, we talk about uh, several, not several, but comprehensive uh, API method under string class. Uh, so this is very important to know which method and how, what, what method to use. But now, but given for this exam, you can actually, um, you can actually get it, right? You can really know, no, not really. You, can, you already have the list of methods to use, but you should know which method to use. Uh, that kind of be the, uh, the area you can deliver the code time effectively. So that will, that will be the review parts we, um, uh, we delivered in the last sessions, in the last part. And uh, before I move on to, uh, based, up, based on the calendar, based on the chapters, I'm supposed to move on to the problem statements, a different loop. Uh, instead of that, which is very um, building curve fundamental parts, I want to jump to uh, really have a review in terms of how you uh, deal with uh, data structure, which is array versus data structure, which is a realist which is literally the first questions of this year, a re versus a re list. That could be a lot, lot of um, uh, algorithm involved in whichever the data structure. So it goes back uh, very basic, how you're gonna access the data, how to change the data, how to delete the data, how to add the data, right? So why not we get start from there and then we're gonna resume after these parts, um, you know, according to our chapters. In a sense, we just put a line here, so I've been talking uh, uh, review uh, arrays versus array list. Uh, before I do that, uh, don't get me wrong. So arrays versus array list, this is a very general, very generic topics. Uh, we, we have to discuss the scope here. Uh, we have two scopes. Now one scope is how to manipulate the element, right, scope two. Scope two is uh, how to uh, how to implement the algorithm uh, either one. So in that sense, let me list down the I'm trying, I'm actually trying to do is uh, make a table. So here's a list. This is a real list. All right. So to make it simple right now, I'm just talking a real list with integer uh, in that arrays. How about that? Uh, and then now let's get started for scope one. Uh, this is not just limited for computer science today. And in case you continue our coding uh, for any data structure, you need to understand how to manipulate the data, right? Because that's a fundamental behind the data structure is to hold the data, hold the numbers, uh, so then the algorithm can kick in and use it. And the algorithm can, can create a lot of result. The result can go back to the data structure. So working closely for data structure and algorithm. Uh, uh, before we move on to the algorithm, which is scope two, now for the data structure alone, uh, remember for data structure, we, you know, it, it should satisfy the, uh, the user case, such as I want to add into it. I want to add a number into it, or I want to get, basically, I want to know what is, the, what is the number in that box, right? Also, I want to know how to change it. I also want to know how to delete it, right? So in that sense, we're going to have add, uh, delete, get and change, right? How to add the data, how to delete the data, how to get the data, how to change the data. In that sense, we're gonna, this is, we're gonna build the table uh, just literally on the syntax parts. Uh, now you have two arrays, you, I'm sorry, you have two data structure, let me just be a very specific. You have first one, you have int, uh, this one just called arrays, um, new int, let's say 100. And then versus a real list, you have, uh, list, uh, integer, and list because new array list. I think our first question is going to give to the Jackie. 
Yes. Uh, I have a question, uh, kind of follow up question. For, you see, uh, I, I creating a list, which is uh, a real list, uh, for the reference, for the reference type of this list, I, I, I put it here as a list. And yes. Uh, what is different than a real list? Uh, you mean a real list in, uh, like, so for a real, for a real, a real list, it's a, like, it's a list that you cannot change something, but like for a list, it's kind of like you can insert something in it or like that. Um, so uh, uh, number one is for the two options, Jackie. We, anyway, we have a real list, right? Create it because on right hand side, it's all new a real list, right? And this is yeah. an integer, this kind of integer. Uh, but for option one, it's a reference type. It's a list of integer. Uh, however, for option two, that list uh, reference type is a real list integer. So what is different? Uh, so, um, Wait, can you explain it? I don't really know. Cause... Okay, so never mind. So let's work through and also uh, show the audience. Uh, this array list is a class, right? Yeah. And what is a list? Is interface, right? So this list can be implemented by a real list. This uh, can be similar as examples such as called fruit. Yeah. Where fruit can be, you know, implemented by, you know, Apple. So a real list is a list. Apple is a fruit. That is a relationship. Oh, but so it's an interface. Like yeah, list is interface. Um, but this is. Oh, this, I got it. Okay, so, so what's it's different? Like, so like Apple is a so like for the fruit class for the list class is an interface. Like a real a real list class is like a specific object which is going to implement. Um, you understand that is our relation correctly, but here list is an interface, a real list is a class. Uh, this is in heritage uh, in terms of a real list implements the list. For this example, apple is a type of fruit. Also, you can think about apples implement the fruit. The fruit. Well, so like uh, a real list is a kind of list. Is that what you mean? A real list is a type of list where it implements uh, the list, which is interface. And, and this list can be also implement, implemented by a link list. Remember, at the very beginning, before we start the review, uh, we, uh, we implement the link list, right? The link list can also implement the list. A real list can implement a list. Even though this part is not being covered in your exam, but at least we should have such a sense after this computer science exam, a class. This is inherited in terms of, uh, uh, if you look at the two, option one, option two, it kind of limits the method your reference list can access. In option one, list can only be a uh, dereference to the method defined in the list. And for second option, the list can dereference to the method defined in the real list class. So that's a difference. And same thing. If you have a fruit, objects equals new fruit, equals new apple, versus apple reference equals new apple, then, well, fruits can have some methods such as is sweet, right? And a fruit can have, uh, no, that's it. That's the fruit has the method. Well, the apple gonna have, apple implements a fruit. It gonna have is sweet, gonna implement, gonna, gonna extend is sweet method, Let, no. Let's say for this interface, then Apple can implement its suite method. And beside, Apple can also have other uh, methods defined in the Apple class, such as, uh, for example, is, and is red. So then if you have a two, relative speaking to this example, you have a two um, um, reference defined as fruit, let's say um, just OBJ, one equals new apple. 
or my clapping here, it's awkward. And the second is uh, based on this, you have Apple as your object type, let's say OBG2 equals new Apple. So the point here is that um, OBG1 that it can only be referenced to the method defined in the first class, sorry, first interface. That's only method is, is sweet. The method of OBG1 can call. For the second method, OBG2, which is Apple types, then OBG2 can call the method defined in the Apple class. Well, how many class Apple have? Number one, it has its own method called is red, right? The second is Apple class also implements the is sweet method. So Apple has two methods, is sweet and is red. So that limits what method the objects can call, the reference can call, right? That, that would be a fundamental part we, had, and we, we need to understand uh, for this inherited. Okay, so that's the difference about the option one, option two. Uh, any question here? Okay, that's good. Uh, and then go back to the comparison. Uh, arrays versus array list. Now, uh, let's say uh, we are using option, uh, option one, how is that? I'm gonna highlight option one. And you have array, uh, which is here, you have a list, all right? And also, let me put red ears and a real list here. Okay, now um, let's let's recall uh, for a re versus a realist. And uh, who's doing that? I'm Patricia. Uh, for a re, how are you going to add? How are you going to add the number? Use the reference name, and then inside the um, brackets have the. Um, or you mean add to an array? Yeah. Like to the length of the array or like to input a value inside of it? Because arrays are, uh, don't, they can't, you can't add to them. Yeah. But this add is just add based on this size, let's say 10, you want to add one more number into that. Do you think it's okay? No. Which is not, right? So this is, so for add in the arrays cannot be done, right? As a size limit as a size fixed. Uh, Patricia, what about the real list? What is, uh, what is the syntax to add something into that? Just put the um, reference name and then dot add parentheses. And then numbers, right? And what about, you wanna add the number add such as, for list add something where actually the number has been added, Patricia? The end, I think. At the end. Okay, now what about at the, at the beginning? I want to add the number at the very beginning. How do, what is the syntax? You have to move everything up. Uh, yeah, that's, but that's implementation uh, underneath the hood. But client side, uh, us, we want to call, but which method are we going to use? Also going to be add. Uh, and you'll have, um, isn't it the one with the two variables, the one where you have the um, index and then the element that you want to add? Beautiful. That's, that's about this one, right? So add, you're going to have two arguments. Number one is index. Well, the index is going to tell at what position you're going to add, right? And then the second element is what you want to add there. Uh, so this one going to be what, Patricia? What is the first uh, argument going to be what? Zero. Exactly, zero, and then whichever number, right? So this is at, at the beginning, at the start. Good, thanks. At the start, right? So for example, uh, you already have uh, a real list. Uh, you have number one, two, and five. If you call, If you call list at, let's say index one and 10, and then you're gonna print out the list. What's the result of the list, uh, Presley?
Uh, Preston, I don't think that your mic is hooked on. Oh, what was the question again? I can hear. Okay. Uh, question here. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Now you have a list where it contains number one to five, and then uh, you call add and one and ten, and then what's now in the list? One, ten, two, five. Okay, very good. So basically, ten is inserted at index one, which is two and five got pumped to the right. One, ten, uh, two, five. Okay, great, thanks. That's about the add, which is you can only do in the um, uh, <clears throat> in the list. Uh, one more question is gonna be a uh, follow up, interesting. Roger, uh, what is the time complexity by called the add method? Oh, is it? Is it what? O of one? O of one for add, right? When you add at the very end, that's O of one. But what if you call at the start, the time complexity is what? Uh, Think about when you add the number there, you're gonna push all the numbers to the right, right? Uh huh. So that's gonna be what? O oh, of what? Right, there you go. For adding in middle, right? somewhere maybe the beginning or middle whichever that's going to be n level uh time complexity good Wait, so if we add it from the end or the start like with an empty array list does it like affect anything or uh we'll add a number into an empty uh into an empty array list yeah and, if you and like use the first method or like the second method do they have any like differences or do they just do the same thing and just add stuff to the array list? Uh, what's your judgment? Uh, is, is, are they the same, same? Do they do the same thing? They're going to do the same thing. Oh, okay. um, yeah, when it's empty, then the add is basically going to be the only number uh, into that array list. Yeah. And for the second, if you add at the very beginning, well, well, at the beginning, there's no number. You, you have no uh, number to push on the right side, just add this number at the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah, so good questions, whichever have the same result for empty array list. Okay. Okay, that's very good. Okay, that's that's about the add, and you can only do that in the array list. And uh, for, for today, uh, actually there's a question uh, checked on you, uh, how to add the numbers at specific spot, which is also a FRQ question from 20, uh, I forget the years. It's, it's actually checking on this method. Now let's go to delete. How do how do delete, uh, Sam? How do delete number in that array? Delete a number. Yeah. Mm. Can a number be deleted from that array? Yeah, it can be. Of course. Um, okay. How? So uh, here, uh, 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 so this one actually I want to refer to that in terms of delete, you kind of shrink the uh, capacity of the data structure by one. Uh, by doing that, it is not by capacity, but literally just have one number removed uh, from that array. So in terms of delete, how are you going to delete? Wait, For example, like minus minus. Um, minus minus. Uh, let's say, let me give you an example, such as you have uh, a array, which is one, two, five. Uh, you're not very happy with two there's, right? You want, you want to delete it, how to delete it? Mm. <clears throat> you can null. Huh? U-L-L. -L. Well, what I, uh, well, okay. what I remember is like, can we use pop or uh, the pop mostly is not for a read. I think it's a stack something. Yeah, that's for stack and queue. You can use in the oh, pop. Okay. I mean, to the delete, you can, for example, you want to delete two, uh, you can do it's a one and then, and then move the five there. And then you have to label the last number zero. You had to label in a certain manner. That is, uh, the zero is not number, actual number, but this spot is right now is empty, right? So you can delete it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this really depends on semantics, how we understand the delete from 
our definition, if the delete is literally like this, we don't change the size of the array, it's okay, we can do that. Uh, for example, you can put this one as a now, where you wrapper all the numbers into the integer class for instance of integer class. You can use a now, which means, okay, this ball has been taken yet. Uh, Replace it this, with now. Yeah. Oh, so if we want to shrink the size, this should be now. If, if you want to shrink the size of the array, which is, cannot be done, right? So because yeah. the, the, the size also is a fixed, we cannot change the map mm -hmm. uh, based on right. Okay, now but Sam, what about in the array list? When you want we to can, delete? We can use like remove method to uh, do in the array list. Okay, now when you call remove, which number you want to remove then? So don't worry, since this is open book, you can always go, go to the Java doc. Yeah. Uh, so which one? So you got a lot of remove. So remove in index. So this is removed elements at the specified position in the list, right? I think it should be this one. Should be this one. Uh, I have a question for you is, if now you have a real list, just have three numbers there, so the size is three, what mm -hmm. if you call remove where index will give a hilarious number, let's say 1,000, what's gonna happen? It's going to be arrow. Uh, you're going to check here, right? Index out of boundary exception, right? Because the index literally uh, does not, it, it does not really have anything in that array list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to give you error, exactly. So uh, into our list, so the, the syntax is going to remove uh, in index, right? Right. Okay, good. Uh, what do you think the time complexity for remove? Pull up what? Sam? Yeah, maybe connection issue. Uh, Jackie, what do you think? Wait, what? Wait, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. I, I heard that. I heard okay. that. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Jackie, I'm going to check on the next one. So, Sam, what do you think? Uh, for time complexity? To call delete or call remove. O one. Uh, o one in what situation is O one? When you um, when you what? When you delete the first or the last? Uh, it's mostly it's actually it's a tricky question. It depend on what this um what this list has been implemented, but now you're implemented by a real list. Think about what is a real list. A real list at the back end is an array. Maybe it's starting when you call, when, you have, when you're creating a new array list, even though you didn't specify any size, but really under, underneath the hood, it's gonna create an array. Let's say size equals 10, not necessarily, I'll just give example. So size equals 10, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you add something, <clears throat> you're going to maintain a variable i, which is basically telling you so far the i pointing at spots, it's available in that size 10 array. You're going to add your stuff and then you're going to maintain your i plus plus moving to this guy, which is open spots. So when you have a lot of number added, right now your i pointing to here. And if you want to remove the last number by a relaced implementations. I mean, this doesn't cost anything. Just remove this uh, uh, ax. So I'm moving the i to, to this portion, right? So that's why delete is all one for at, at the beginning or at the start. Yeah. At the end, at the right? End, right? yeah. Okay, at the end, yeah. Uh, what about the, uh, what about now? Uh, you're not happy with a number such as uh, first index zero one, and we want to delete this one. How are you going to do that? And uh, underneath the hood, and it's going to do is, okay. If you want to remove this one, okay. First of all, I'm going to copy all the numbers to the left, right? So yeah. This act going to get them to here. If you have a following number, it's going to do the same, and then I minus minus, right? Yeah. So that will be what? O of N again, right? Yeah, O O N. Time complexity is O of N. O N, yeah. O -N. Okay, O N, yeah. For O N for delete. For delete. At the end. For delete in uh the middle. Okay, in middle. 
Okay, that's great. That's about the delete. So far, we talk about add a number and delete a number. Right? And what about the get? <clears throat> so here, get is just peek and look at what's, on, what's in there and, and just get the value of it. We didn't touch it, we didn't change it. Uh, so how to get in a reverse array list? Jackie, what do you think? To get? Yeah, to get. Well, let's say um, uh, you just put the index you want. There you go, exactly. Just array and int index, right? Okay, so what about real list? In terms For of- real list? What is API if you go back to this list uh, to get the numbers? Uh, just put it on. Um, this one, right? Return the element at the specified position in this list, right? Oh, wait, yeah. Okay, so then the syntax is gonna be list get and then just give the index. Index number. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jackie, questions. What do you think the time complexity for each of them? Time complex, I just put time because uh, you know what it is. For array, in terms of get, what is time cost? I think it's one. Exactly, that's, that's one. That's what I'm saying. Array is a very expensive uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of what? I think I talked about that, uh, right, Jackie? What do you think? When I said, array is why like, array uh, is expensive? So so if you want to like, so if you want to change something or you, get, or you want to delete something in a, in a specific like index, you have to delete the whole thing. It's like until, until where it is. Well, that, that, that is good. That's for the first, first one. But uh, uh, from even upper level, um, when we're trying to decide which data structure we want to use, uh, in terms of array, which is expensive, which is because are we gonna take in consecutive bits in the memory, right, Jackie? Are we gonna take in consecutive uh, memory cells in the memory and, and just name this is zero, you are one, you are two, and so on and so forth. See, the size is 10, then the last one is nine. This has become very uh, luxury in certain scenarios that you don't have a consecutive space. So they make it very expensive. Uh, however, a reason very fast in terms of Think about that. Now you have everything you know, bundled together. Now, I, I, if you want to you know, reference to the index seven, well, that's gonna become very simple. If you know where's the star, just count seven and get there. That's why time-wise is all one for get. Um, and this is time complexity, but also in terms of uh, uh, locality-wise, a read is very good in that sense. Uh, so it's very fast to access the number. Okay, good. Times all one. What about the array list, uh, Jackie? The array list? Um, yeah. I think it's also all one. That's correct because array list actually is array, right? It's, I think it's the same about getting it. Yes. And why array list does not have size limitation? What happened behind? Like, um, like what? Um, like now is a question asking for a real list. When the difference is versus a read that a read has size limitation, well, a real list does not, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, because you oh, can add, because you, because you can add it it's like every time. We can add it every time. For example, now we add all the number in that arrays. Now at index nine, it has a number and then client call add again, add another one. Let's say why, what happened? Yeah. It, it's, Remember, it's gonna copy, gonna creating a larger array such as size times 1.5, now size of 15. And all the number has been copied down from a zero to nine. And then gonna add the spot 10 with, with a Y here, right? So you see that for a real list behind it, it's still gonna be an array. The only difference is uh, you don't see it. It automatically expands the capacity of the uh, array, right? Once it, is reality is not going to reach the last spots and then going to cop the number. There's going to threshold such as maybe 75%. The capacity has been filled for existing arrays. And then you're going to just, you know, creating a larger array and copy all the number in. Well, on your client side, you don't see it. You just keep, keep add, but behind there's a cost. 
so that's why for a real list in terms of a cat, since this is still a read, that's also O of one. Okay, last one is a change. How to change how to change a number uh, for arrays, uh, Shirley? Um, how to change a number for arrays? Yes. You can't, right? Uh, we uh, uh, we uh, the here the change is just change the you know if it is an integer array you want to change the value for any spots you can change it right? Oh, um, what Not did change you the size. Uh, replace thingy or. Um, I don't really remember. Um, this one you can still using the same uh, as the get, right? And just assign, just assign a new value to it, right? Such a written in index equals zero, you change it, right? Well, but I think we can change the array list, don't we? Yes, yes, that's gonna be, I'm gonna discuss, but for arrays, we can change the values. Uh, to change the value, so don't get me wrong. So to change the value, what's the first step to change the value? In order to change the value, first thing you need to get first. So we need to call the get, not call the get. Actually, the first step is to get theirs. And when we get theirs, and then we can change it by using assignment. Uh, in order to get there, this is syntax for arrays, right? Just array and bracket index. And then as to you want to change or not, really depend on your assignment or not. So that's to get first. Shirley, still there? Make sense to you now? Um, yeah. Okay, now, what about a real list, for, uh, Shirley? Um, Let's say list. Uh, same thing, example, you have uh, one, uh, two, and five. Now, you want to change the two into something uh, different numbers, such as one, ten, five. So, uh, in that way, there is a syntax we have to bear, which is called set. Uh, go down to set here. Set, you have two arguments. One is, okay, which spot you want to change? And what is the new value? Elements. So replace the elements at the specified position in this list with specified elements. Okay. And and this one uh, uh, for the set, it, it also have a return. When you call the set, you not just only set the value, but also can return you something. That is the element previously at the specified position. How do I understand this? Let me give you an example. Uh, uh, let's say now list example here is uh, example one, two, five, and now, if I write something like num into the list set, uh, I'm looking at the first index, I'm not happy with it, I wanna change it to 10. Uh, then what happened after that, if I print out the num, surely? Um, then it would become one, one, five? First of all, it's gonna, re uh, gonna become one, 10, five, right? Because we set the index one to 10, right? Number oh, wise. yeah. Okay. okay, that's the first thing. But the, the second thing is this is set method also gonna return a number, which is integer, where definition is, uh, it gonna return the number at its origin, origin, original spots. So two? Exactly. As two, which is original number. Uh, so that will be the set API. There we go. Okay, now's good. Uh, good, thanks. So uh, that will be a walkthrough, uh, arrays versus array list uh, uh, in terms of how to add uh, and how to delete, how to get, how to change. Uh, the point behind is I want you to be solid as uh, in, your, in your coding, uh, deliver the coding, uh, to know what method, what exact API syntax to use, such as you want to delete for the release, such as you want to change for the release, and also how to get, right? Okay, so that will be the first part. Uh, any question for, uh, so far? Okay, um, if no questions next, I want to talk about the second scope. Uh, 
second stop is basically to practicing the discussing scope one just for just for questions where the question can uh, have you to deliver the algorithm uh, on a reads or on a real list. Uh, in that sense, I want to just in, also this is also a review perspective. Uh, I want you, I want all of you guys to review what the binary search. So that's why for scope two, this is going to be a question that is how are you going to do binary search in an array, and how are you going to do binary search in a real list. So let's try to use an example to reinforce about part of uh, the method we discussed. So scope two, implement binary search in arrays and in list okay, in arrays. Uh, so the question is, is about that. Uh, I'm gonna give you um, some time. So you just get prepared now. I'm gonna uh, write down the questions. Uh, so, uh, so given uh, a data structure, including uh, team numbers, as uh, and and we are not necessarily sorted. Uh, uh, given a target number, uh, please uh, find whether the target number is included in the data structure. Okay, so I want you to deliver two. Number one, the data structure is a 1D array. Uh, which one you can, uh, let me give you a method header I want you to deliver. So whether or not questions, so you're gonna return balloon. So now your argument here is um, uh, search, uh, the method header is search in array. And the arguments is you're gonna have array and an in target. So that's gonna be the first one. Uh, and then number two, data structure is a real list. Uh, so this is array. And again, public colon, uh, searching in list. Uh, this one is uh, list integer uh, list. Because uh, remember this one, I'm using this one, option one. So that's why the reference is a list integer type. All right. And in target. Okay. Um, so each one, I want to give you five minutes to deliver. So assume uh, the data structure is neither now or empty. You don't worry about the corner case. Okay. And for the second, uh, a real list, you assume uh, all numbers are sorted in uh, ascending order. But for the first one, it's not necessarily been sorted. So you have to uh, worry about whether or not you want to sort it or not and how. Okay, so um, five minutes on, um, on each of them. Uh, and then we're going to go through. So this is a really good chance for you to practice in the syntax uh, on a read. I think we're all very solid with that part. But what about on a real list? Let's take a look. Now let's uh, let's see how to crack the two questions. Uh, question is uh, binary search algorithm implementation in one D array, and also in the real list. We need to find a whether or not the target number is it does exist or not in uh, either a real uh, integer array or the real list. <clears throat> um, who want to who want to show the first one? Data structure in one D array. So this one, remember, you need to sort uh, the array before you want to apply binary search. Uh, before we do that, let's quickly review the binary search, the algorithm. Uh, the binary search 
Like the key of a binary search is faster than sequential search. Uh, what is time complexity for binary search? Well, in terms of faster, of course, you should know how fast it is. Um, this one, go back to Amy. Hello, Amy. Hey. Uh, um, what is, yeah. Um, I think that it's O one for bio uh, search. What about sequential? Uh, for sequential for sequential search, you think about it. I think it's also O one. O of one, which means a constant time. Uh, o of one. That is, um, no matter the size of uh, the array, for example, we use an array. Uh, it always taking a constant time to figure out if, whether or not target number is included. When you route it, it is not right. So sequential search. Uh, sequential means uh, for all the number zeros. What we're gonna do is we're gonna traverse each number, first, second, third, fourth, and last, and compare with the target. If Sam, then okay, find it. If not, then not, right? So sequential search, the time complexity, I mean, that's gonna be what? O of N, right? Linear time. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, uh, what about binary search? Even though binary search is faster, but it cannot be so fast like O1. The binary search is every time we're gonna remove half the data into our scope. So after first round, we can log. have. Good. What is log what? I love log in. Again. Okay, good. Log in. When we say log in, what is the base number? It's going to be two, right? So it's log, log in, exactly, but the yeah, base number is two. Okay, good. Yeah, beautiful. So that's a uh, time complexity of the two. And now we understand uh, what is uh, binary search. Now let's implement it. Um, let's say first one, let's work on the first one, data structuring one year array. Um, uh, uh, don't worry because we're, uh, we're gonna work together to deliver the code. So anyone wanna volunteer for the first one? Okay, feel free to jog in. For the first one, uh, we have to making sure the array, we had to sort the array. The reason is because that is to go back to the binary search. Since in every iteration, we can fill half of it. So why we can fill half of it is based upon that if number already sorted, let's say 157, 12, 14, and our target is such as 14, the binary search is uh, we're gonna maintain a two pointers, where left pointer is pointing to the first number and and uh, and right pointer is pointing to the end of so far available uh, range of numbers, and by doing that we're gonna check the meta numbers, if the and compare the meta number with the target, and for this example seven is less than the target, if that if if so then. We're gonna ignore the seven and all the numbers in front of seven. Why is that? Because all the number in front of seven gonna be less than seven. Since seven is less than target, well, we have to fill half of the number in the range from L to R, right? So that's why we had making sure the numbers in that array has been sorted. In terms of a CSA scope, uh, just making it, it regularly is gonna sort in a ascending order. Uh, but in reality, as long as the number has been sorted, ascending, descending, or even has a pivot, uh, what I mean pivot is can ascending first and then descending, so you have a peak. As long as you have a certain part is sorted, you can always use a binary search to deliver. Um, but now, let's go back to CSE level. We had to making sure all the number sorted, let's say in ascending order, so that's why the first step, you, you have to sort the arrays. Uh, you, 
in terms of uh, exam, you can call API to sort it. Uh, but also in terms of uh, searching algorithm is included in uh, the scope, you also need to know or need to interpret uh, the searching algorithm. So uh, with that being said, uh, to sort array, uh, alternative one by calling API, right? So the API is called arrays sort. Where put array here? Uh, this one you can refer to the Java doc. Uh, if you go to, uh, I go to the arrays and and Java, you can, you can find that API right there. Uh, here. And for that method underneath the arrays class, you can see there's a method called sort. Um, where we are interested is this method. So first of all, this method is static. And the method header is called sort, input arguments. The input arguments is the array you want to sort it. So this kind of sort the specified array into ascending uh, numerical order, uh, which gonna happen in place, which means it gonna modify your incoming arrays. So that's why it's gonna return anything. Uh, that's why to call this method, you can just call from the class level, which is arrays dereference sort and putting our arguments there. there. Uh, so that's going to be our first option uh, by calling sort, right? And the alternative, alternative two, uh, so we can, we can use a selection sort. Um, so here you can put a selection sort, selection uh, sort. And this method is input arguments also going to be implicit is array. Uh, you're going to deliver a selection sort. Uh, I really want to take this as uh, one last chance for everybody to work through selection sort. And when I come back to the sorting algorithm overview or review, I will not go down such a detailed level to show the code. So let's take the chance to deliver uh, the code all together. Um, so after, I'm going to show that later. And only after that, you can, you can want to start uh, the binary search. Only when the array is being sorted based on what we just said. So now let's first uh, deliver uh, the binary search for first, and then we're gonna deliver the selection sort. Now, let's say uh, selection sort has been completed and arrays in ascending, uh, has been sorted in uh, ascending order. Now, in terms of binary search, uh, in light of the algorithm that has been shown here, so we really need a two pointer first of all, L and right. So the physical meaning behind is left and right gonna specify the range of the data inclusive uh, that has been checked, has been searched for the target, right? So that makes sense you can have two variables, integer, integer type left equals zero and integer right equals to the right end of uh, number by uh, this example, we're going to be using a read length subtracted by one. And then you're going to think about every iteration, we're going to shrink the range of the numbers, right? Which means we're going to maintain the position of for L, going to maintain for R, and we're going to do uh, iteration um, um, as, uh, as it does until, until a situation where we stop, right? When we can stop is when the L and R, uh, what? When the L is greater than R. Since L and R specify the range, then when we finish the searching, which means L and R over pass. When L is greater than R, then we stop. That makes sense, right? Based on the physical meaning. That's why you're gonna deliver the iteration by while loop, while what? While left, is less or equal than right. Because when they exceed the while loop, that's gonna be left is greater than right. And that's where the searching is done, right? right? So now let's go into the while loop and deliver the logic here. Uh, the logic here is always compare the number where made index pointing at and compare to the target. So you gotta figure out what is made index uh, you can write left plus right divided by two uh, as as beginning, uh, but really you really want to write the code as left 
plus uh, write minor slab. Minus two. Actually, this is literally um, APCSA choice questions for which you are forget. It's asking you why you want to deliver right side as such. So the idea for this one is to avoid overflow in the such situation such as right now equals the max number minus two and the left equals to max number. Well, in that sense, um, your mate is supposed to be what? Your mate is supposed to be max minus one, right? So that's how you can still get the mid equals max minus one by this instead of by left plus right divided by two because left plus right right now you see it's going to outside of the representable range for integer number 32 bits however by this one left plus parenthesis right minus left divided by two based on priority of operation now first of all find the parenthesis these have the highest priority right minus left right minus left all right, let's just left be minus two, right gonna be max. And the difference is gonna be two, right? And the two divided by two, you got one, and one add on the left, which you're gonna have a max minus one. So avoid, will avoid the overflow. Otherwise, you're gonna have error. So that's why you need to understand why we wanna write in this manner, and also want you to deliver in your exam also. So starting from here, you're gonna compare. Then there's a three situations. Case one, uh, the number, which is a renum uh, at the middle, the number is actually equals the target. And case two, greater. And case three is gonna be less, right? So now think about it. So if in the first case, the array made equals targets. So let's say this number is, let's say target is seven. Now middle equals targets. Um, uh, guess what? You can just return true, right? Because you found it. So for this case, you just, um, Return true, right? For the case two, else if, let's say a remade is equals greater than target. So look at here, if the made is greater than target, such as target is, you know, five, and that means seven included and also number in right hand side can be ignored. So ignored means we can shrink the range of the searchable data by moving the R to where can two made or even to mate minus one, whichever, right? Because it's better you can move to mate minus one because seven is for sure is not gonna be the answer. So you don't need to put R at the seven again. If so, you're gonna what? You're gonna you're gonna maintain the right corner equals mate minus one. And for the case three, uh, it's gonna be same story, right? So when uh, the number at the mate is less than target. If let's say targets go back to 14 again. Now, your middle is seven, seven, seven is less than the target 14, then seven included and also all left numbers can ignore it. Then you're gonna maintain the left to uh, mate plus by one. So here is uh, left equals mate plus one. There you go, right? So um, continue doing that uh, until when? until your left and right overpass, uh, which means when it exit out the wire loop without actually return anything, which means, guess what? There's no such a target number included and just return false. So that would be the logic for binary search and this is coding and later tonight I'm gonna upload to the server. Um, any questions so far for binary search? Okay. And then let's go back to the selection sort. Let's deliver the selection sort. And also first thing is you're gonna review what is selection sort. 
Uh, anyone want to just volunteer, just basically uh, semantically talking, what is selection sort? Anyone? Hungry? Let's say now you have um, size five or rate five, seven, two, four, one, of course not sorted. Selection sort is what, Henry? Uh, can you, uh, any idea about selection sort? Um, so like selection short, sort, it, it divides the, like, the list into two parts. Okay. And then the, there's a sorted part on the left side. So like they move all the, sort, the ones that are already sorted to the left and the okay. sorted ones to the right. And then they just reorganize it. Okay, very good. And you, you just go through the high level that is actual implementation level that is saying we're going to divide the uh, array from two parts and left part is unsorted. Uh, the right part is unsorted, which means uh, once, you, once you finish the given iteration, you can find the position for that number and that position is fixed. You're not going to touch it anymore. Okay. Uh, as to the implementation, uh, Stu, again, we, let's give you an example. The way cost selection sort is that you're going to select the so far minimum numbers from that iteration and place that number to its position. That's called selection sort. Um, at this level, I don't want to expand to compare to insertion bubble, and that one I'm going to lead to the next session. No, the session, later session, as I said. Uh, so, so this example, so-called selection sort. Now in first iteration, we're gonna look through all the numbers, five, seven, two, four, one. Well, apparently the smallest number is one. So what we wanna do is, I wanna put a one to its position. Where is the position? Gonna be the first, up front. Then we're gonna have one, seven, two, four, five. And like Hungry said, once one gets you as a position, then we're gonna put a fender here saying, okay, left part is being sorted. I don't want to touch anymore. And then your second round is looking at the remaining unsorted portion, seven, two, four, five, which is smallest, two, right? Then you have one and a two because two belong to the second spot. You have a seven, four, five. And then your fender is gonna move, move down to here. And same thing, right? So I think I already make the points. One, two, and then four, uh, seven, five, and then find they're gonna go down here. And this algorithm gonna stop when you only have one data uh, after this vendor, because just by yourself, there's nothing to do. Uh, that's a selection sort as an example. Now we wanna reflect this into our coding. So uh, again, this one is, uh, don't worry, a reason neither now nor empty. So how do, how do you deliver the selection sort? So Jackie, what is uh, time complex before selection sort? Um, N. Um, really could be O of N. Wait. Um, like also log in? Um, it could be, uh, let's do this Jackie. So let's try to deliver the selection sort then I'm pretty sure you can come up with the time complexity. Um, since for this, uh, we have to basically loop in every iteration, so which means we, we had to use a for loop, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, now we well, had a few, yeah. Uh, is that O in square? Yeah, that's correct answer, O in square. That's for selection sort, good. Uh, this one actually taking a for for loop. And now going to the code, uh, so, a little comments uh, on build out the coding curve. Uh, I always recommend you to always go with example, making sure example can well reflect your logics. Uh, and then before you dive into the coding and even before you dive in very deeply into the details, uh, making sure uh, understand the physical meanings of all variables you declare and, and combining with example and make it easier or smoother to deliver the code. 
Now, for selection sort, apparently we need now, okay, what is a fender position, right? Or what is a position, in other words, what is a position when in that round you find the smallest number? What is a position to put that number? Such as in second round, when you find uh, two is smallest number in second round, and then the position to put that number is index one. And the same thing for the other round, right? Just based on example, which means you need to declare a variable, which is a pointer, to point out the available spot in this one year array. That makes sense, right? Okay, and what else you need to do is a compare, isn't it? Because when you're trying to find the smallest number, the way to find the smallest number is by comparing, by comparison. You're gonna have a reference. What is the reference to compare against? So then you can figure out is that minimum or max, is that smaller or larger? So you can continue uh, the searching. So that way is, um, you can have, first of all, to maintain a reference, uh, So first thing you're gonna traverse, right? So you're gonna have an I kind of starting from the zero index and I gonna less than um, the array length minus one and I plus plus. As I said, the physical meaning of the pointer I is, um, is gonna literally telling you what is the spot. When you find uh, the smallest number, you're gonna put that spot. So that's gonna be the I. For example, in the first round, the i equals zero, and which is pointing at the first spot. And then when you find the one, a smallest one, you're gonna put the one to this spot, right? Okay, so that's the first one we have the pointer. And the second one is we're gonna need a reference based on, based on what just said, right? So reference to compare at. In other words, uh, you can think about this pointer as this. J pointers, um, Points at so far small smallest um, index of so far smallest number. What I mean by that is, um, let's say in the first round, the i is pointing to this guy zero, and then you're gonna figure out, okay, what is the smallest number? Why you traverse all the rest numbers, isn't it? Five smallest, and then the j gonna so far pointing at zero because by itself, and then you move on to one, seven still five smallest, G doesn't, doesn't move. And then moving on to the second, two is less than five, then J kind of pointing to index two, so on and so forth, until J points to the uh, index four because the one smallest. After that, you're gonna swap the number at index I and index J, right? That's a physical meaning of J pointer. So starting from here, and of course your J, gonna starting from where? You're gonna start at the I, right? Because the I is standing for what's your starting uh, range of all rest numbers. Uh, let me make a user friendly. Uh, yeah, just using J. And to start from here is you're gonna look in all the numbers uh, based, you know, let me for example here. Now in the first round, I is years. And also J right now is pointing uh, index one also because just one number, J, pointing to the index of so far smallest num. That's no problem with that, right? Um, so you gotta start in traverse, all the numbers, right? Starting from the first or second doesn't really matter. So you're gonna have another for loop. You're gonna have int uh, k, you know, let me really don't, let's use a ref. mix up the descriptive a little better, right? So you see I'm just indexing it. Okay, so um, 
then you're going to have uh, the k kind of starting from um, starting from where uh, you can start from i right or it can start from i plus one if you really want to check the first one and the k going to less than a re length and a k plus plus so idea for this inner follow up is trying to do this okay so uh, So right now, everything's pointing at the Zeus index. And then, but you need to continue in your first round to search for the smallest number, right? So now, uh, your k, when k is at zero, and just by itself, so i, d, x, m is still pointing at zero, and, the, and the k kind of move. When k move on to the first index, the number is seven, right? So the seven gonna compare with your i, d, x, m pointing at the so far smallest number index if the seven is greater than five you don't touch your idxm still pointing at zero and move on k now k move on to the second index and two is less than five so well so far smallest number index is not zero anymore you got to move the idxm pointing to the two and same thing k move on to three four is greater than two you don't touch and then until um uh, you okay, move on to the index four. And then one is less than one, four. So, uh, sorry, two. So you gotta maintain ID, uh, X, M, uh, pointing as index four. So reflect that in this inner for loop. You're gonna, you're gonna track in this if statement is what? Gonna check in what? If array and for index M, so far smallest num if this one is what is greater than a re at index k and when this happens you're going to maintain the idx min to the k that makes sense right only when you find a even smaller number you're going to maintain your idx min physical meaning is putting here you're gonna point into that index k because that you have to update it. And after that, after this inner for loop, so basically you found the smallest number in that iteration. So next one, you're gonna swap. You're gonna swap the array at index, at index what? At index i and index idxm. as physical meaning of the index i, point i is telling you what is the spot to put that smallest number in that given round. So which, we just need to swap the number. So this method, given the time you can deliver is, is rather straightforward. Uh, that's it, right? And after this given round, you're gonna move the i to one. So based on this example, you're gonna go to the second round. The i gonna move into here and also this number one, you will not change its position anymore. It's a fixed. So that's why we're talking about their fender. Left side is, you know, sorted. The right side is unsorted. That will be the selection sort. So far, any question? I'm not too wor worried about that because mostly um, uh, related to this, I'm gonna check on you on uh, choice questions. Um, it could be more uh, uh, tedious as details in that selection sort. Uh, but now is FRQ questions. I highly uh, doubt it would include in a, such a choice question manner and, and just in you know, the FRQ uh, delivery for you to complete something, but still again, uh, the bad thing is you need to know, uh, you need to interpret the code and time complexity. And also, uh, hopefully, I expect all of you can deliver the code as well. So you're gonna be very solid without 
uh, worrying, you know, the user case where they really have these parts in the FRP. So that would be the selection sort. Um, spend a little time your offline time, uh, your offline, uh, if you want to uh, uh, checking the reference of the selection sort and also detail of the coding. I'm gonna upload to the server later tonight. So that would be the first one of searching, finding search in one D array given the targets. Uh, number one, you need to sort it the array in a ascending order. And then you're gonna uh, implement the binary search where every iteration you fill half of uh, the numbers in that given scope. That's why the kind of complex for binary search is a log n, the base number is two. And for selection sort, uh, the kind of complex is n square. In terms of you have a four four loop. For any uh, number you, you associate with another for loop, that's why n times n, you got n square. So that would be the syntax uh, driven for uh, searching an array. And, and now let's move on to the realist. Uh, so uh, it's gonna be implement the same logics and just using different syntax. I will, I will think it's gonna be rather uh, straightforward. So I wanna put this one as your homework. 